and uh, we took it and ran with it. And uh, Flair was uh, Flair. You ever see the movie The Flam Flam Man? No. no. You know what a Flam Flam Man is? No. Mm -hmm. Bruce, you listen to me? Yes. <laughs> is uh, he's the uh, he's the ultimate Flam Flam Man. Hey brother, I love you, man. You know what I mean? Knowing deep in his heart, he don't give a shit about you. He gives a shit about himself. That's fucking shoot. He cares about himself more than anything else. And uh, of all the people that I talk about or had made money with, I made money with him. But uh, one thing that, that he maybe didn't know is I knew he was a friend for him, man. And when you have an enemy that you can use, use him to the best of your ability, because deep down he can't stand me. Deep down he, he said, I'm, I'm his enemy. We're enemies. Uh, and he, he was surely not as great as I made him to be. He had the ability when he first started. He wanted to be Ricky, Rickus Rhodes. The way to Bismarck, South Dakota, was 300 pounds. He said, he's driving my car, driving me to the matches. And he says, uh, I've came up with a name. He says, uh, I want to be Ramblin' Ricky, Rickus Rhodes. And I told him, I said, you know, I said, make your own, your own way. Be your own self because you have talent and you're going to be something. And he tell you this true story. And don't take that name. It's not that I don't want you to have that name, but make your own way because he had the ability to do that. And in our early times together, we were great friends and he was super. But money does strange things to you. Power. Insecurity of knowing how good you are. And he was, he's that good. Maybe the best. They say that a lot. I think Hardy was the best, but they say, you know, they, they always, uh, if you read the net for whatever reason, you right. know, I just started to learn to work this fucking thing because I'm huh. on the web page, you know. So it says <laughs> DustyRose.net slash whatever that means, right. you know, the slash backwards, but uh, we're building a page. So he, he, uh, they talk about him like he's, he was God, you know what I mean? And he wasn't, you know. So but maybe he was the top too. I think so, yeah. Well, even now he can outwork anybody that, that, that a group has. That's the ability. That's not, for, that's not the personal side with me and him. I know he's a flim flim guy, okay? I know that. And he knows that I know that. And he might think I am. So at least we know where we stand, so we never have a problem. There was never no problem. You know what I mean? So, yeah, he was far greater work than Tully Blanchard or Iron. Iron was just Iron. There's a hundred Iron Andersons, you know? Right. But there was not an Iron Anderson that could actually get it done like him to work while he knew what needed to be done. He knew you two guys, you and him and you two guys were in a tag match with me and the Warriors. And he knew that he had to get us ready and they were going to take the fall on him. But brother, you, I mean, you know, that, that he had to get the thing ready, you two guys had to be stars. He knew his role and he was great at it. And uh, he had wrote this book about me revolutionizing the industry. I have a tremendous amount of respect for him, uh, and he's, you know, and, and he's still in the industry, so that's cool. I like to see guys that are still in our business that help make it. You know, yelling. Next. Hey, all right. <laughs> Next guy is Ric Flair. Thoughts on Ric Flair? Well, I told you the story about uh, Ramon and Ricky, Ricky Rhodes. Uh, played at Wisconsin, I believe, in you know football. Uh, Ganya broke him in. He was selling insurance, I believe, to nurses or something <laughs> in Minnesota at the time he was broken in. So he'd already been out on the, in the work job. He had a beautiful wife at the time and has a beautiful wife now. And uh, he, uh, he, he had a, uh, oh, that's what we differ in age sometimes. Because I know when he was working and when he broke in, he had to be as old as I was. He had to be. So now if we're both 45 now, you know, since this is a shoot interview, <laughs> he, uh, uh, that was one thing that always bugged me, you know, his age. But, but his ability to now still, like I said, outwork just by half-ass. Working a lot of guys in this industry. It's uh, phenomenal. Phenomenal. And uh, 
a lot of years we had uh, dogs there everywhere. <laughs> there, you, there's you. That is um, that's uh, Moonshine Max right there. I don't know if you can see him, but he's looking through the door. <laughs> he uh, he had the uh, a great ability and uh, the flim flam to take care of himself and to make you feel really sorry for him in and out of the industry, out of the business. Uh, ring wise financially booking him, him pretending, trying to be a booker, uh, a lot of respect for him in that aspect of this game. If we're just talking about that, he might be the best. Some say he is. I know he has a great following of people that don't really know the business. But uh, he, uh, he, uh, we made a lot of money together. But I think I made him more money than he made me. And I think that's the key to uh, Ric Flair. And success to him and his family is, uh, I love his family and his kids, uh, is uh, I just always want him to have success because I don't want to see a guy like Rick who did so much for this business be down to the point of saying, Jesus, you know what I mean? Uh, we owe guys like Rick this business does because he's repaid in full. So a lot of respect for him in that that aspect, but uh, personally, as you know, as you could tell from my verbiage here, there's, uh, there's always been this inner battle with me and him on a personal level, but, uh, you know, Rick is Rick, 18 times world champion, I believe, or something. I mean, he's asked